I'm Andrew McRae, and welcome to Ag Insights, where we discuss issues facing rural and agricultural America. With me on this edition of our show is Dan Neenan, and Dan has quite a title, so much so I want to make sure I get all this correctly. He is the director of the National Education Center for Ag Safety, and he's also a paramedic specialist and firefighter with the Epworth, Iowa Department. Dan, your title alone gives us plenty to discuss right there. So take me back to being a rural fireman. Uh, how far back do we go? Because that sounds like that's kind of your first involvement with this topic. Yeah. So I first joined the fire department in 1991 and then uh, joined the staff here at NECAS, which is the acronym for the National Education Center for Ag Safety, in the year 2000. From there, started developing safety and rescue programs that were agricultural based. You mentioned NECAS. Talk about then what that does and, and the program then that rolls out to all these departments because it's certainly extensive. So uh, our programs have been uh, approved through the uh, Iowa Fire Service Training Bureau, um, but we're, we're looking at hands-on training programs that deal with the root cause of what's causing the injury and what's call is causing the fatality of the farmer or of the agribusiness personnel. So talk about some of that hands-on type of work you've done. I'm sure you'll probably be quick to say, well, there are many people involved, but yet you jumped into a, a place here where perhaps there wasn't a lot of education that had been taking place or the ability to get some of that information out to rural fire departments. Is that what you were helping develop then? Yeah, you know, to develop the hands-on training program because farmers and firefighters are alike in that. They don't want to sit and listen to somebody talk for eight hours. They want to go out and get their hands dirty and do something. So I, we first started out uh, in the early days, tractor rollover, uh, then combine auger. Uh, then in 2010, we built our first grain engulfment simulator, and that became a very popular program for us. Uh, then we did confined space manure pit. We built a trailer for that, and we use water in there instead of manure. So my wife will let me back in the house at the end of the night. And then the last trailer that we developed was an anhydrous ammonia safety program. Dan, you've done training for many years. Any guess of how many people you've trained and helped to be able to do this work? I guess it would be a guess on my part, but I would say it would be close to 10,000, you know, that have been to the hands-on training. Do you have an idea of the impact you've made? I'm sure it has been large, but sometimes we step back and realize, wow, we have made a difference. Talk about that impact. So from the, the safety side, it's really hard to count an incident that didn't happen. Uh, from the rescue side, that's a different story. Uh, so from the, the grain bin rescue side of things, we've now trained 32 departments that have gone on and rescued somebody out of a bin. How do you respond to someone who says you're a hero? A hero is somebody that's driving down the street and they see a burning house, you know, and kids in the window, and they've never been trained, and they go in and they perform a rescue. To me, that's a hero. I try to be a well-trained professional volunteer. You need to be properly trained in what you're doing and be a professional and good results will happen. Dan, I know that you do this because you want to help others. So it's not about personal accolades, but yet this has been a legacy that you've left uh, helping so many fire departments and farmers out there. Speak about that for a moment, because certainly you have helped so many. If you take a look at the partnership that we have with Nationwide, and then from there, all of the partners that have come together to donate and make Grain Bend Safety Week happen. Do I play a part in it? Yes. Am I the only reason because of it? I don't think so. I mean, uh, it's a team to be able to do that. And it's the same thing with the fire department. Dan, certainly people are busy and rural America sometimes has a shortage of people. So what would you suggest to have the folks that we need out there to do this work? Volunteer services are hurting for folks. Um, you know, in daytime help in small communities, you know, most people will leave their small community and come to a bigger town to work, which means that during the day, there's very few responders that are available for a medical emergency or for a fire or any type of ag emergency that's going to happen. So if you've ever considered it, you know, stop down and talk with your local fire department. Reach out to your local community and see what help, you know, or what volunteer opportunities are available. Thank you, Dan, not only for your time, but also for your service. Thank you. And thank you for getting the word out. And thank you for joining us as well. You can learn more at thinkgrainbinsafety.com as well as aginsightcenter.com. Thank you.